Please let us know. Yeah, thanks. Right, Scott, uh, Chris, uh, Carrie, any questions, comments, or concerns about the uh, minutes from the last meeting? Uh, uh, here. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry, none here, Jeremiah, Scott. Perfect. Uh, Chris? Jeremiah, I don't know that I received a copy of the minutes from whatever the previous meeting was. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, no problem. We we will we will get those to you. Um, again, since this is not a this is not a voting uh, situation, it's more of a hey, do you guys have any questions about about these minutes? Uh, so we can we can proceed with without um, uh, the 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 approved minutes here is more of a any questions, any comments or concerns, and if there are none, then we 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 approve those those minutes. So. Um, okay, moving on, let's go to the next page, Anacasia. Okay, so I'll be providing some administrative updates and then uh, Kelsey will, will continue to provide some administrative updates. So um, just wanna let you, everyone know that the UDRC staff moved uh, to Yushi effective on July 1st. Um, so for the last almost six months, uh, we've been um, working through the migration process, both system-wise, meaning the UDR system, as well as uh, personnel and uh, integrating with, with Yushi and um, our processes here, both at, from a, all the way from an HR level to more of a conceptual level, such as our, um, our peer review processes and stuff like that. So um, the staff has done an excellent job uh, accomplishing that uh, for the last six months. Uh, it's been a considerable amount of work. Um, but we uh, are in a uh, significantly better spot than we were obviously on July 1st um, from all the way from the system to administratively. Um, so really happy to, to report that at this time. Um, next item is the completion of the fiscal year 15, federal year 15 SLDS grant. Um, that was on September 30th, 2022. Uh, we had all the grant deliverables completed with um, minimum viable products uh, delivered from the UDRC side. Um, we have a meeting with the Department of Education uh, where we are going to be delivering uh, or reviewing the deliverables as well as discussing next steps and the future for the UDRC um, that will be occurring uh, next week. So any questions about the completion of the FY15 SLDS grant and the deliver deliverables they're in? Okay. We did want to provide an update on some new data initiatives that we have um, in the horizon. Um, so the first one is the Ages and Stages Questionnaire, or ASQ. Um, so DWS, through the Office of Child Care, is funding the onboarding of the ASQ data uh, into the UDRC. They're being very generous in providing us with a um, quarter of a million dollars to do this, to this project. Um, we are coordinating with the Department of um, Health and Human Services to amend our current MOU to include the ASQ data. Um, again, thank you so much, Rick, as well as Stephen Matherly uh, for assisting us in, in, in that effort. Um, your involvement and your subject matter expertise uh, has been really uh, tremendously helpful um, to be able to get that completed or, or close to completed. So now we are targeting quarter one of 2023 to start work on the technical components of all onboarding that data. Um, and uh, we are working and coordinating with DWS to have the contract completed um, so that we can begin to receive funds um, and allocate resources to, to this project. So we're very, very excited about getting the ages and stages questionnaire data uh, into the UDRC. Um, there is a lot of uh, research possibilities uh, that can come out of receiving this uh, early education data uh, into the UDRC. Um, and um, I think that there's a lot there that we can achieve. So. Um, next, I would like to provide an update on the possibility of receiving licensure data uh, from the Commerce Department. Um, they have expressed a, a pretty heavy interest in onboarding their licensure data into the UDRC. Um, we've coordinated with the Commerce Department on um, things like the variable costs associated with uh, onboarding it and the fixed costs. Uh, we provided those, uh, those estimations to them, and uh, they are going to be working um, coordinating with the legislature uh, to amend 53B33101, which is the UDRC's new um, code section in the Yushi's um, code. 
uh, to make that change to allow Commerce Department um, as a data partner uh, into the UDRC. So hopefully more to come on that as the legislative session kicks off here uh, pretty soon uh, and we see progress um, on that on that realm. So any questions, comments, or concerns about the new data initiatives that are occurring? Yeah, just a quick quick change. I think Q1 2023 is probably Q2 2023 for the technical components of ASQ. Uh, yeah, sorry if, the, if that was a, a, a typo there. So, yeah. Okay. All right, um, I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Kelsey for more administrative updates. You hit next slide, Anna Kajo. Thank you. Um, so just a quick uh, staff update. Uh, we did lose um, Laura Dahl, who was kind of working on our website as our user experience researcher. Um, so just bear with us as we um, shoestring our website together. Things might be a little bit slow to get updated. Um, and then just announcing Anna Kasia taking over administrative support. So you all met her um, at the start of the meeting. So thank you, Anna Kasia, for organizing all these meetings and taking notes and et cetera. Um, our 2023 research agenda is live on our website. So you can find that under current research agenda on our website now. We were a little bit like getting that up this year, but it has been up for a few months now. Um, and then just a heads up that we'll be collecting research proposals from our data partners um, starting in early 2024, uh, before the 2024 agenda. So we'll be pulling data partners for those research agenda items again. So if you have anything coming up that you would like to try to get on the UDRC research agenda, just uh, start playing that or keep that in mind. Um, and then lastly, we did submit proposals for the um, best practices conference in DC, the Stats DC best practices. Um, Stats DC? No, but just best practices for SLDS groups. Um, so we may be presenting there if our proposals get accepted. Um, any questions about any of that? Okay, next slide, please. I think this one is Vincent, so I'll turn it over. Yeah. Thanks, this will be pretty quick. So I'll just give a quick technology update where we are with the system. And now I know a lot of you guys are getting to see inside the system, which is really, really exciting. Um, on Acacia, can you advance the slide, please? Okay, so getting into some specifics with uh, cloud deployment, all of our researchers right now are currently working with V4 data. So that's the data that we had processed prior to uh, moving from GWS. Uh, and it's working really, really well. We're really excited about BigQuery and about um, Vertex AI, which is a Google supplied kind of notebook thing that's, that they, they offer and lets us keep the data all within Google. Um, we are back up to doing data requests. So now we can work with the data and we have an analytics platform, which means that we can process data requests again. So um, we are accepting data requests through UDRC at uchi.edu uh, and the research portal that allows people to, to go, kind of go through the, the web wiz wizard to, to sign up should be relaunching pretty soon, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, which is really exciting. Um, for our data partners, we do have a new exporter being released. Uh, it should be a little bit easier for you guys to use. It'll be a website. You just download it onto whatever machine uh, has can is connected to the data you want to send us. And it'll just use a regular SQL file. It'll have a little wizard that you'll go through and, and we'll be back in business as far as sending raw data. Uh, not sure when we'll be going for that. I'm hoping Q1 2023, we will be bugging everybody to do a partial uh, re-ingest so that we can do some benchmark uh, mapping and, and just make sure everything is nice and spiffy in the, in the new GCP uh, system. Um, and then the third generation indexing and enrichment system. Um, for those of you that are in our DI data now, you'll notice that we have we add some extra columns to our data. So that's the enrichment part. So we add a table identifier. And in V5, we're gonna be adding a confidence number. So how confident we are that we indexed each row correctly, which will be pretty cool. So you guys will be able to see 
uh, how confident we are in our own system by, by the numbers, as well as the source of the data, when it was processed, all that. So it should be kind of a, a radical transparency shift for everyone. Uh, and I think DWS is coming on tomorrow. So that's really exciting. Um, on Acacia, can we get to the next slide, please? Oh, yep, and this is onboarding. So, so far we have brought uh, USB and Yushi into our system so they can now see the de-identified data that they provided to us. I, I hope they're, they're finding that a kind of interesting platform. And we do have some exciting things coming down the pipe where I think we'll be able to collaborate on, which is kind of cool. Um, next up is DWS. I think you guys are up tomorrow. And uh, once we have DHS HS data in our system, we'll go ahead and onboard them as well. Uh, but that process has been pretty smooth. Uh, I think we made the right choices with how we set up GCP and it seems to be playing out. Hasn't been too bad getting people uh, into the system. If you have any problems, please uh, reach out and bug me um, if you can't see your data or if you're having trouble running analytics or big queries yelling at you or anything like that. Um, and that's it. I think Kelsey will take over from here. On Acacia, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, yep, this is just our research update. So Karen Tao's up first. Thank you, Kelsey. So on the next slide, we are looking at RE15, which is a research looking at stacked awardees in Utah and their workforce participation between their first degree and their second degree. Um, so as of right now, the first draft is completed and also peer reviewed by our internal peer review procedure, partner review, and also manager and assistant commissioner review. Um, it is currently pending communications review at Yushi. And also the data narrative copy is also completed with our manager review and assistant manager uh, assistant commissioner review. So also pending communications review. And on to the next slide. Um, it is about the new research that we're starting right now, and it is looking at the gender wage gap for women of color in Utah. Um, and this is going to look at the gap with the focus um, on women of color. And um, right now, the research proposal has been approved. The SQL code has been written and also pre-reviewed as of last week. Um, so upcoming, we will have partner initial meetings with Yushi and DWS. Um, then after that, we will begin the analysis and the modeling. Then on to the next slide, I'll turn the time over to Ari. Thanks, Karen. Um, so on the first proje uh, project, RA9, we're looking at public assistance, um, public assistance used in higher education. So we're describing the relationship between the completion of a post-secondary program um, and public assistance used for those who are already using public assistance. And public assistance in this is SNAP and TANF, uh, commonly known as food stamps and welfare. So the current status, uh, data narrative and report have both been completed and gone through um, all the reviews except uh, they're currently awaiting approval from comms. So these uh, should be uh, published here shortly. Um, as a dashboard, a data narrative, and a report. And then on the next slide, we have RA14, and this is looking at the relationship between firm size and wages and wage growth for degree and certificate earners. So we're just we're looking at the relationship um, again between a large firm, and in this case, a large firm is, is defined by the number of jobs that a firm has, uh, not the number of employees. Um, and we're looking at uh, each year post-graduation, the relationship between wages and firm size, and then wage growth as well over that five-year period. Um, and if it's different for those employed in a large versus a small firm. So the current status of that SQL and analysis are complete. Uh, the first draft of the report is currently being written. Um, so after that first draft is written, that will go through our internal peer review process and then onto the data partners for their review. Uh, the data narrative will also be created and undergo the same review. And I'm going to turn it over to Connor now. Uh, thank you, Ari. So the first project that I'm going to be talking about is looking at the students with disabilities. This project is analyzing the descriptive outcomes for students with disabilities 
regarding the post-secondary and workforce outcomes. So we're looking at certain things like what type of post-secondary awards did they earn and what were their degrees after they received them. Um, the current status of this is I have finished formatting the document to publish on our website. Um, this is currently just going to be going to Kelsey for review. And then I'm also working with Zach, who I believe is on this meeting with the data narrative. The next step for this would just be presented to the ODRS team and publish the final product within hopefully the next month or so. Do you mind going to the next slide, Anacasia? The second project that I'm going to be talking about is looking at the SIP families during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, SIPs are the programs that students are complete when they receive their awards. We're thinking of certain things like if they got the finish their program in healthcare or if they got it in public administration, um, those sort of items. So this is looking at those programs and then looking at the wages that students or graduates uh, and their wages during the COVID-19 pandemic. The current status had been that the data has been pulled from the database and the committee has approved the proposal for the outline of the research. The initial design and goals of the research have been established. Um, I'm going to be meeting with uh, our partners in, in UCI to talk about the outline of the project and hear their feedback on whether they have any um, thoughts or comments on what to look out for, as well as DWS, which is going to be happening in mid-January. So the next steps are just going to be those meetings as well as implementing their feedback. And then the analysis will go into the initial um, process of doing the analysis, doing the first draft, and then going through our peer review process. So this project is still pretty early on in the, in the process. And I believe I'll be handing the time back to Kelsey. Uh, it's it's me actually, really quickly. Oh, actually, <laughs> no, you're you're fine, Connor. Um, so, I want to really quickly introduce uh, Zach Barris. Um, he is the um, assistant commissioner over here for user experience. Um, so yes, we, uh, as Kelsey has uh, pro uh, provided an update to all of you that Laura Dow, we lost Laura Dow as our UX researcher, um, but we've gained Zachary as the, uh, the person over UX over here, and then we were in the process of hiring a person to report to him um, as a UX person. So I just wanted to give Zach a chance to introduce himself since he will be uh, coming to these meetings and he'll be providing updates in the, in the future. So Zach. Thanks, Jeremiah. Um, it's good to be here with you all. Uh, again, Zachary Barris. I, I know Scott and Stephen from, from prior years. I've been involved with the UDRC peripherally for uh, since its inception for that uh, with the UDA. Uh, so I've worked mostly with the technical colleges throughout my career since 2014 when I started with uh, UCAT at the time. And things have shifted and responsibilities have changed and now I find myself working at UCI. So it's good to be here and uh, let me know if you guys ever need anything or any questions about some of our data products. Perfect, great. Um, Kelsey? You can go to the next slide, Anacasia. Um, yeah, so since Zach's just getting started, I'll provide the UX update for this meeting. Um, so our accomplishments um, since our last meeting include moving our website from utah.gov to uh, ushi.edu. Um, this is now hosted statically through our Google Cloud uh, platform. So thanks to Vincent for getting that set up. Um, we relaunched our newsletter, which hopefully you're all still subscribed to. Um, let me know if you want to subscribe to that. I can add you to our list. Um, we completed um, a data narrative that looks at um, post-secondary outcomes for low-income students, um, which is up on our website now. Um, we've completed but not yet published um, the dashboard that Ari mentioned for public assistance um, and post-secondary outcomes. And then we've also completed and published um, the workforce outcomes for associate degree recipients. So, the low income and associate's degree dashboards are up on our website now. You can find them at uh, udrc.ufc.edu. Um, and then currently, as Connor mentioned, um, him and Zach are 
working on the figures for um, the outcomes for students with disabilities dashboard. And then the next one in the pipeline is Karen's project that looks at um, stacked credentials and workforce patterns. Um, so just some future work that we have kind of planned. Um, we like to improve our social media engagement and get our blog posts and news posts um, relaunched. So hopefully we can get that get that going again. And I think Vincent's next. Yeah, Anakasha, could you go to the next slide? This will be really quick. Um, we only have one request in the pipeline right now. It, it, it's uh, by someone that's here, it's by Zachary Barris. I apologize for the delay. Um, we are we are working on these. Um, it's just me right now, so I'm a little slow. <laughs> but we are we are working on the launch my career uh, request and it should be should be done relatively soon. Uh, we should be able to move that move that into a report. And hopefully now that um, the site's back up and we'll be doing newsletters and blogs, we'll start seeing uh, more requests come in. Um, especially when we relaunch the research portal, it's a little bit more obvious how to how to sign up. And that's it for me. Uh, Anakasha, would you mind going to the next slide? All right. So that was all the content we had for you today. Um, so at this point in time, is we're just opening for public comment um, from uh, our data partners, as well as anyone in the call uh, regarding questions, comments, or concerns that anyone might have about the information we provided to, to today or past information that we've provided. So. Hey, Jeremiah, so Scott, can I go? Yeah, please, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So not really a question or concern or anything, but I have to uh, basically close the grant out with my board, the SLDS grant. So I'm not sure when that'll be, but we'll make sure to invite you, uh, you know, because to your earlier points, I mean, we did pretty well with that. You know, we spent the money really well, and then we're getting recognition from Charles and his team. So. Um, that'll be coming up, but I'll make sure that, you know, you guys know when that is so that we can look at how we're going to present that to the board, right? So, um, any concerns or questions about that? No, absolutely not. I think we can probably in many ways reuse the deck that we're going to be presenting to Charles. Um, right, uh, right. Similarly, yeah. Yeah, so. and then, you know, just, I mean, maybe for the good of the group, but when I meet uh, individually for USBE with UDRC, um, I let Jeremiah know that, uh, so we had quite a changeover in our board membership here, uh, you know, with by way of the elections this last November. So the direction I got was not to submit any uh, requests for research until after we brought on the new board members and, um, our, our whole board leadership changed too. So we have a chair and a vice, two vice chairs, but that we'll be following up with uh, Jeremiah S UDRC to make sure that we get those in, but we have to do it at the board's direction. So um, unless there's any questions or concerns for me or for USBE, that's all I have, Jeremiah. Thank you so much. No, thank you. We appreciate obviously your support as always. Um, Chris and Greg, Rick, Kerry, any questions, comments, or concerns? Anything that we, you guys would like addressed at this time? Jeremiah, I don't have anything. Okay. This is Rick. I don't either. I just appreciate the opportunity to to, to, to see what's going on in the in the in the group. It's been a long time since I've been involved with this body, so uh, I'm glad to be back involved. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right, well, that's everything we have for you today. So thank you again for being our data partners. We appreciate it tremendously. Obviously, without your involvement and your support, we none of this would be possible. So um, again, thank you so much um, and, and your, with your coordination as well. So have a, a wonderful day.